clicking on people is a fundamental part of playing RuneScape. So for a fun challenge, I decided to get rid of it. This is Invisscape, my hardcore Iron Man account where everyone is invisible to me at all times, thanks to a couple of RuneLite plugins. Despite this limitation, this account will get a fire cape. Hopefully without dying along the way. Welcome to episode 2 of Invisscape. Last episode, I got myself a staff and unlocked the ability to train magic on this account. But the ability to train magic also hinges on having something to actually cast spells with, and my rune stack is looking pretty thin right now. So for the time being, I'm going to focus on fixing that. But first, user Gibble7863 pointed out that Invisscape has an Invis cape. And I have to say, it always just feels wrong walking around RuneScape without a cape on your back, so priority number one today is to get that sorted. Fortunately, somewhere around this crossroads, there's normally a highwayman hanging out, and he has a guaranteed cape drop, so I'm going to wait for him to assault me. There he is, coming in with his classic stand and deliver line we all know and love. Well, my thin stack of runes has now become a non-existent stack of runes. Oh. For some reason, I thought the cape was a guaranteed drop, but it looks like that's not the case. Fortune looks like he had a buddy hanging around nearby as well, so surely this cape isn't that rare and I get it quickly. Level 4 ranged. What's interesting about this is that if I switch to accurate now, my max hit with bronze knives will be a 2, and I'll actually have slightly higher DPS compared to using rapid. Thanks to no stress Steph for getting me to double check that. And there's the cape. Invis cape is bareback no longer, he's covered it up, and he's feeling protected. Interestingly, this cape has some slight defensive bonuses, so definitely worth getting for more than just the fashion. What would be helpful on this account is getting to Karen, because there are a ton of aggressive monsters there that drop so many useful items, but honestly, I'm not optimistic. You have to talk to Veos to go there the first time before any alternatives like teleports are unlocked. I'm hoping I can force a dialogue with him, just like I did with the Gnome Stronghold by trying to board his ship. Cross the gangplank, please trigger a dialogue. Ugh, that's unfortunate. Well, it looks like Invisscape unfortunately cannot go to Karend, which will make <laughs> getting a certain crucial item way harder, uh, since that leaves me with only one option on how to get it, and it's definitely going to be tough, but we'll cross that gangplank when we get there. Listen, getting runes on this account isn't great, but what if I didn't need runes? Or at least not elemental runes. A Staff of Air, something you can buy super easily for cheap at Staff Staffs as a new player, would be an absolutely huge upgrade for my account, saving me from having to pick up air runes one by one or bank on getting them as drops. But where can I even get one? Well, it seems that my best option is Clue Scrolls. They're a 1 in 45 drop from Beginner Clues and a 1 in 36 drop from Easy Clues, so it's not like it's outside the realm of possibility for me to get one of these. So I decided to go back to Draenor Dark Wizard since they have a 1 in 50 chance of dropping a beginner clue, and also because they drop these. Ah, uh, 10 mind runes. I can't believe how excited I am every time I see this, but this drop, that's 10 world hops that I don't have to do, which is huge for me. Let's be real here, getting runes as drops is way better than picking them up one by one off the floor. Level 5 range. Oh, and also level 5 combat. Every time I level up combat, I get that feeling of like, Ugh. Soon I won't be able to fight these guys anymore, and I don't like that. Jamai Q, longtime viewer, suggested that I pick up coin drops since they do have some use, like paying the Alcarid uh, gate toll, if nothing else. There's probably some other stuff too, so I've decided I might as well pick up coin drops just in case I really need them for something in the future. I'm just pacing around looking for a wizard to fight. Is someone gonna come out and fight? Oh my god, look at all these twos I'm hitting, I'm just shredding this guy. And there's level 6 arranged as well from it, wow. Oh, and there's my first hit points level. Obligatory Hardcore Iron Man, I feel much safer now comment. Level 7 ranged, which is... Oh my, I'm chancing myself here, hold on a sec. <laughs> Got a little too excited there. Uh, it might not look like it, but this is also a very important level because I can now switch back to rapid and still hit 2s. So that's like 50% more DPS now, which is a huge jump. 36 earth runes, that's so good. To you, this may just be like, what, 100 GP worth of earth runes, but I just can't get over how excited I am every time I get a double digit rune drop. It's just incredible. There we go, the first beginner clue, as well as yet another staff. Looks like I'm starting a collection of these staves now. All right, let's see if this is something I can... Well, okay, you're really coming all the way to the bank, huh? 
Ah, uh, unfortunately, this is a step to talk to Doric, which I cannot do, so this clue scroll is going bye-bye. Oh, okay, this wizard really decided to chase me all the way to the bank door. Nature runes. These should be pretty good in the future since they give access to non-combat spells, which are particularly useful for training on this account. Level 12 range, level 9 combat. These levels are coming in pretty fast, but I am unfortunately now down to less than 100 bronze knives left, so I will have to go smith some more very soon. And looks like I'm pretty much all out here, so it's time to go make some more. I still have plenty of bronze bars left over from my initial excursion. I was saving them up in case I wanted to make some other items, but honestly I don't see anything in here that would be useful to me at all, so I'm just going to turn these into knives and if for whatever reason I need anything else at some point I can easily just get more. Important level here, 15 smithing, which means I can smelt iron items. I guess that seals it, probably just going to be what I do moving forward, no real reason to continue with the bronze at this point. All the bronze bars have been turned into 435 bronze knives, so it's time to head back to Draenor and keep farming those dark wizards. Level 16 range, which I believe means I can now hit threes? Oh yes I can, that is beautiful. So yet another 50% DPS increase. Oh, I just can't get enough of this 36 earth rune drop, it's just so nice to see. Oh, I just got a black robe drop. I'm fairly certain this has some good bonuses. Oh yeah, it does. Okay, plus 5 magic attack bonus. Definitely going to be nice when I start using up these runes to get as much XP as I can out of them. Beginner clue scroll number 2. Hopefully this time a completable step. Talk to Charlie the Tramp. Unfortunately, yet again something I cannot do. I'm going to make a little pile of junk clues over here in this corner of the bank. Beginner clues have 6 different types of steps. Anagrams, Charlie tasks, cryptics, emote clues, hot and cold, and maps. From some testing I did a while back, I think the way it works with beginners is that each type of step is equally likely, regardless of the number of steps of that type. The first four of these require me to talk to someone, and only the last two don't, which means I have a fairly simple 1 in 3 chance of getting a completable step every time I get a beginner clue. Level 14 combat. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the end of an era here because I am now double the combat level of these level 7 wizards. Which means that the next time I gain a combat level, that's it, that's all. They will no longer be aggressive and I will never be able to fight them again. Fortunately, there are still higher level Dark Wizards, but they have more HP and man, I just got used to shredding these guys fairly quickly. Well, it looks like I'm entirely out of food, so I'm gonna quickly head to Ardoin to restock. Surely nobody is camping the Wilderness Lever, right? Like, there's no way someone's standing here waiting to teleblock me. No, of course not. Who would do that? No, I got the dunce random event, but alas, I cannot do it. Never will I be able to lay eyes on one of those beautiful XP tomes. How sad. Level 20 Thieving. Turns out this skill is actually going to be super useful to me because at level 72, I can steal from a chest in the Ardoin castle that gives raw sharks. And given that last episode, I found out that I can't actually fish them. That's probably going to be my best option for getting food for the fight caves. A fire talisman, that's interesting because if I can get consistent pure essence from somewhere, crafting fire runes might just be the fastest way for me to get them. And this could not come at a better time because I am 1 XP off of level 17 hit points. And level 17 hit points gets me level 15 combat, which means that the level 7 dark wizards are no longer aggressive to me. And this is the last one I will ever fight on this account. There we go, it's official. It's the end of an era. It feels weird, I have officially been locked out of ever fighting these guys again. I will say though, I am super happy with the runes I've gathered from this. It doesn't look like a huge amount, but hey, on this account, I am happy with all the runes I can get. So I mentioned earlier my plan to use sharks as food for the fight caves. Well, I'm going to need level 80 cooking to make those actually edible. And something that would make training cooking much easier on this account would be access to the cooking guild since I have access to so many item and ingredient spawns in there. But to actually access the cooking guild, I need a chef's hat, which you'd normally get from imps or goblins, but obviously I can't fight those since they're not aggressive. Fortunately, there is one other NPC that drops the chef's hat, and that is the pirate, which are aggressive. So I'm headed to the Asgarnia Ice Dungeon to see if I can get lucky and snag myself that 1 in 128 chef's hat from pirates that are down there. And of course it took until I got all the way here to realize that I didn't bring any food with me. And I can't take the boat to pest control so it looks like the nearest bank is going to be Draenor. This takes me back to actual 2007 when I was in free to play and my best money maker, or at least I thought what I thought was my best money maker at the time, 
uh, was fishing lobsters on Karamja and then running all the way to Draenor to bank them. Yay, level 3 magic. Unfortunately though, I seem to be doing nothing but splashing on these guys, which seems like a waste of rune, so I'm going to switch to range to see if that's any better. Yeah, so unfortunately these pirates are burning through my food right now, so I think I should revisit this later. They are level 26, so I do have a long way to go before they're unaggressive to me. Just gotta remember to get that chef's hat before I hit level 53 combat. I've come here all the way to Relica because I heard there's an iron pickaxe that spawns right here. And I want to do some mining, so if this thing is one tick faster than my bronze pick, this trip should pay off eventually, right? Ah, nothing quite like being able to mine at your favorite mining site without having to worry about a mugger mugging you. Oh, here's something I forgot about. You can get clue geodes while mining. That might not be a half bad way for me to get clues. Oh, unfortunately, this one is an emote step, which requires you to talk to Yuri. Time to find a new corner to drop these uncompletable clues in. Oh, another clue geode. That was fast. Do I get better luck this time? Nope, unfortunately, that's four clues so far, and all four of them requiring me to talk to someone. And this should be level 35 mining, the last level I'm going to get for now, because with this inventory... I now have just over 500 iron ore total, which will get me to level 22 smithing, just from smelting these into bars, and then I can turn them all into throwing knives. Perfectly calculated, this is my last inventory of iron ore, and that is level 22 smithing. 1000 iron knives made, should be good for a lot of ranged XP. And I'm going to use up a few of my remaining bars here just to make some melee equipment, why not? There we go, some various gear upgrades. Goodbye, Bronze Square Shield. You have served me well, but you have been usurped. I decided to go back to Dark Wizard since from beginner clues I can get both a Staff of Air and a Staff of Fire. These ones at the Dark Wizard's Tower are higher level than the ones in Draenor, but to compensate, they drop beginner clues at a rate of 1 in 35 instead of 1 in 50. Alright, so pretty quickly here I can tell you these guys are hitting me a lot harder than the ones in Draenor Village. Man, I'm just getting destroyed by these guys. I'm having to eat food constantly so that I don't die, and I'm just burning through all of it. Yeah, I'm spending so much time eating, I barely have the chance to attack back. I think it's time to get out of here. I really need to rethink this. And this is where I realized that this account is just an impossible balancing act. On the one hand, I need to get higher stats to fight stuff because I can't fight easy monsters, and I can't save spot difficult monsters. But on the other hand, getting my stats up just means that I lose the ability to fight certain monsters entirely because they'll become unaggressive to me. How do I balance these two things? What if I level up too much and lock myself out of getting a certain drop forever? This account clearly requires a lot more planning than I first thought it would. I need to have a clear roadmap of what I'm going to get and when. It's time to head back to the drawing board and figure it all out. <laughs>